And the time being 8 o'clock, we'll open the public hearing for Visi Flash on Pleasant Street. I'll start by reading the uh, public hearing as it appeared in the Brockton Enterprise on... I don't have the dates on here. No, they don't put them on anymore. No, they don't. But, but it appeared twice. I think it was October 22nd and October 29th. Okay. Notice is hereby given pursuant to Mass General Laws and Chapter 40A, Section 9, Section 4.4, Contractor Steward Yard, Section... Section 4.6, Water Resource Protection District, Section 7.2, Site Plan, and Section 7.5, Special Permit for the West Bridgewater Zone and Bylaws. The West Bridgewater Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, November the 6th at 8 p.m. in the McDonald Brown Conference Room at Town Hall to discuss modification and expansion of an existing contractor storage yard submitted by Visi Flash. Doyle Brothers and to be located at 31 and 45 Pleasant Street. A special permit is required for a contractor storage yard and for an activity in the Water Resource Protection District. The site plan review is part of the special permit process. A copy of the proposal is available at the office of the town clerk for review. All interested parties are invited to attend, signed by the West Bridgewater Planning Board. Okay, we got the legal ease out of the way. If uh, you will introduce yourself and then tell you what you tell us what you're proposing to do, please. So, uh, for the record, my name is Rebecca. I work for Silva Engineering. I'm here to represent Busy Flash and Ed Doyle for his expansion of his existing storage yard of traffic safety devices. And so he's acquired the land just south of it, 30, uh, 45, and the existing house will be demoed if not already. Totally done. Oh, it well, is already done. demoed. Yeah. And so he's looking to just expand the storage and fleet parking. He's got so many trucks and everything out there that he wants to bring back for the winter. So the entrance to the site will remain the same. We're not actually introducing a new, new curb cut. We'll actually be adding a berm right along in here so that you really can't see much going on. He'll access this parking lot through this way, the side entrance, the southern side of his existing. We're proposing this first parking area to be paved and the rest of it to be a gravel storage with just a strip of pavement around the edge to capture the storm water convey it into the catch basin and keep it looking better than just loose gravel at some point he's going to want to expand right now we're proposing a storage shed and at some point he's going to want to expand it to a warehouse so he can put more stuff away from the elements um, we're not increasing um, size for the septic, the staff is still the same, it's really just the equipment that needs a place to live for the winter. Um, we are in a water resource protection district. Um, we're not storing any chemicals, other, we're not storing any hazardous material other than the tank of gas that would go through any of its stormwater controls, which, if I turn the page, I can walk you through the stormwater. This has gone to conservation for the stormwater permit. There was a few comments that we were asked to revise the plans to show a construction entrance. Uh, I don't have one shown. We were going to discuss where one should be since we're not coming in off the street. So, stormwater is going to run from Pleasant Street down to the back. This is the way it goes right now. It heads towards the back towards Lowe's. And that's what we're going to continue to do. I have a few catch basins in the parking lot that will catch, clean, convey to an oil grit that will do the rest of the cleaning into chambers under the, underneath. It's size for a, up to the 100 year event in the event that it doesn't, there is an overflow, um, which would be the same direction in this low corner over here down along the property line. Um, that is the quick story if there's any questions or thoughts willing to entertain them. okay anybody got any mm -hmm. okay um <coughs> are there are there's you said storage is it any storage of liquids you need to, uh, other than a tank of gas that may be in a truck no nothing okay so they're for traffic cones they're for uh, you listed them all out it's actually listed on the plan as well 
Uh, the proposed shed, proposed warehouse will be for storing safety <coughs> items. Uh, this would be the same that's already currently stored in the existing building in the yard. Um, traffic drums, traffic cones, construction signs, sign stands, water <coughs> wall, signposts, barricades, the flashers, all non-liquid, hazardous, no hazardous materials. Okay. And uh, the gravel area is where uh, is for storage of any the, one of these things. Yes, any things. one of these things. It's not. It's not for the parking of vehicles. The parking of the vehicles parking will be on. Parking of vehicles the, will be on on the paved areas. Will be on the paved areas. And everything will go through the. And I did the size traps. the system as if this was impervious for when the day he does maybe pave it. Um, the stormwater will suffice in size and whatnot. But yes, the pavement and the parking is all in here okay and so even so this still has a catch basin that would go to the oil grit so in the event something happened okay. it would still go through the catch basin there's nothing in the buildings it's nothing no, no yeah. hazardous. all this stuff is made out of out of rubber or rep yep, plastic. reclaimed plastic or yep. something rather uh, what does he do? What about the uh, the batteries on the on the flashing? They did inside. They'll be all inside and disposed of at, as. Yeah. Yes, okay. I'm just trying to think. Of I know. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. It, it, it's it's <laughs> it's almost so simple that you yeah. you, you, you wonder what. It kind of is in a way. Yeah. What, what there are all, all those high tech batteries, anyways, because it's, most yep. of the signs are solar. Yep. So it's, it's a panel. It is. It's, it's, it's the panel. Actually, if you look at the aerial, you can actually see some of the panels on some of these, I believe. Some of these are actually the solar panels. Okay. The panels are three by six. Or yeah. yeah. Kind of neat. I, 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 yeah. I, I and they just replenish those, a nickel cadmium, or yep. some other, whatever the solar panels store in. Mm -hmm. are, are you people here for this? This hearing, uh, this is a public hearing. Uh, do you have any questions or concerns? No, no, I'm the, uh, one of the owners. Okay, all right. No. You didn't go upstairs, did you? No. Okay, <laughs> okay no, we just, it is a public hearing, so if any, any of the public, they do have a chance to speak if they did. Okay. At, uh, <coughs> oh, and. Like I said, stormwater was approved with minor changes to the plan to show the construction entrance in wait, um, entrance location approved with conditions for the stormwater permit. Oh, where am I going to? I'm going to have to show some sort of roof downspout. That was the other thing. Oh, from Coin Combo, yeah, they love those. Yeah. Um, for a shed, yes. No rain gardens. No rain gardens. <laughs> Donna, is there anything from any of the boards in here? Did we get anything any? that I have is on top of the hose? Everything that um, came in. There was a pond on, on, oh, and that's her invoice. Um, that's no, the that's board board. Yeah. Okay, let me read it into the record. This is from the Conservation Commission. Dear board members, in reference to the above matter, the commission has noted that the fact that the proposed construction activity triggers a need for a general stormwater management management application. The applicant has submitted that application to the commission and it's in the process of our review. The West Pedro Con Con appreciates the opportunity to present these comments to your board if you have any are the applicant have any questions. So okay so that was before they had the meeting, yeah. Yeah, this is dated uh, yeah a month ago. Yeah and they had the meeting on ten fifteen. So Okay. So it's all that's a that's a mute issue. A okay. All right. Just need a hand on the bill. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want Donna getting upset. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's let's go through the through the thing. The uh, water resource. Uh -huh. 
Pardon? It was the, the original building was, yeah, but I think then it just went for the ZBA <coughs> because I think the, uh, when we redid the uh, water resource area, when the state came in with a new definition of it, it came across, originally it stopped at West Center Street, the water resource area stopped there, but when they re redid it, oh, 10 years ago, in fact, it was about the time your father got off the water commission, um, they extended it, and one of the areas was they extended it across the street. Yeah, I was just curious if there was other With just, just the line. Let me, uh, contract of storage yard is 4.6. You need the water resource. This is where we have to make some findings. Okay, I found it. <laughs> what section do you want to It's section 7.5.3.1. Okay. Special permit granting authority shall not approve any such application for a special permit unless it finds that in its judgment use of the site is in harmony and with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw and subject to and consistent with the conditions, safeguards, and limitation here in set forth and subject to all of the following conditions. And this, this is what we have to make uh, positive findings on. The site, the specific site is an appropriate location for such use, structure, and condition. It's yes. in the, it's in, it's in, it's in the correct zone, it's in the, it's a good piece, yeah, everything. The use as developed and operated will not adversely affect the neighborhood. Um, we're at the continuation yeah, of, of one, it, it doesn't appear that it would, would be. There'll be no nuisance or hazards to the vehicles or pedestrians or the volume greater than the capacity of streets affected. And that's certainly have an habit. Adequate and appropriate facilities shall be provided for the proper operation of the proposed use. Mm -hmm. And E, access to the site over streets is appropriate for the type of vehicles involved. So I need somebody to make a motion finding that second. all of these conditions have been met. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then it's another one, it's another th one here that we have to do too.
Okay, it was right under my, I missed it. Okay, in section 7.5.3.2, in, in addition to the items listed in section 7531, any such application for use in the water resource protection, protection district shall be subject to the following conditions. The use is appropriate to the hydrology, natural topography, soils, and other characteristics characteristics of the site to be developed. Yes, yeah, nothing hazardous. The hydrology goes in the same direction as it's going now. And you've got the, the uh, you've got provisions be. for uh, cleaning any of the yeah. storm water. Yes. Uh, won't have it. Okay. B, the use will not, during construction or thereafter, have any adverse environmental impact on any of the zones of the Water Protection District. It has gone through the stormwater um, permit process, and so we do have erosion control around <coughs> the site to keep the construction and thereafter under control, and it'll be stabilized with only seed and pavement or gravel. Okay, and the use will not adversely affect any existing or designated future public well. Same things as before. Well, yeah, if you yeah. Meet all the others, yeah. I guess. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to. So moved. In a second. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Okay. Now we also have to approve the site plan as uh, prepared, which is in. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Site plan. We have uh, reviewed it for the uh, site plan. Uh, what about lighting? There are there are lights. We are actually going to reuse the poles that exist here. We're going to add fixtures. Uh, I believe this is going to be a four-way, and we're adding wall packs to the shed. And there's another pole here to adequately like this, this site. Okay. With the uh, respect to the one in the uh, out at the front where there's a residency, what kind of... Uh, We're going to shield it. Th this one right here, you mean? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be directed directed and shielded down. Okay. And we'll check it and make sure. Okay, because that's one of the main things with a site plan review. Of it. Okay, anything else on the site plan review? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the site so plan. So moved. Second. Yeah, I just have one question. Oh. The, uh, you, you, there's a shed. This is a, a shed now. That's existing. This is a proposed shed. Okay. Yep, and this is a future warehouse to expand. But that's not proposed right now. Right, Not right now. In the near future, maybe next spring, not right now. Okay, so there are no changes to any, any footprint areas. Okay, so I don't have any. Somebody second the motion? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Yes. Any opposed? Vote is unanimous. Thank you. Okay, we will uh, prepare the special permit and file it with the uh, town clerk, which will start the, the appeal period. Thank you. Have a great night. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. A lot nicer than Larry. <laughs> 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 when, he look, when he sees it on TV, he'll hear it. Okay. Okay, we're running five minutes late, but the second second public hearing tonight is for MD Holistics. I'll read the. Uh, legal notice as it have appeared in the Brockton Enterprise. Town of West Bridgewater notice of public hearing. Notice is hereby given pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40A Section 9 Section 7.2 Site Plan Section 7.5 Special <coughs> Permit and Section 7.8 Medical Marijuana Treatment Facility of the West Bridgewater Zoning Bylaws. West Bridgewater Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, November the 6th 2019 at 8.15 in the McDonald Brown Conference Room at Town Hall to discuss a special permit site plan request for a medical marijuana treatment center submitted by 
MD Holistics Incorporated and to be located at 63 Maple Street. A special permit is required in order to operate. A site plan is part of the special permit process. A copy of the proposal is available at the Office of the Town Clerk for review. All interested parties are, in are invited to attend, signed by the Planning Board. And with that being said, I will uh, ask the proponents to make a possess presentation. I ask also that anybody that wishes to speak identify themselves before speaking so that we we know who you are. Although I, I think we've met you all before, but. I won't remember. <laughs> okay, thank you, Hugh. Um, Robert Pellegrini, <coughs> attorney um, from Bridgewater, uh, representing the applicant. <coughs> I'm going to just get right to the point. This is the first and probably the last one of these you'll see, so I'm just going to basically get through this. Um, so the location of the property is on Maple Street, right before you get to the end of it. Um, <coughs> it's currently um, used by Plassey Masonry and a solar business as well. And um, the proposal is essentially <coughs> just to use this building rather than for what it's used now for um, medical marijuana. Um, I'm sure you've heard about this a lot in the past couple of years. We've been working on it. This is a little bit closer. The address again is 63 Maple, zoned industrial. Um, existing use is the same. It's uh, paving company and masonry. Um, building area is 7,440 square feet. Uh, lot size is 3.2 acres. Um, frontage 532.81 feet along Maple. Um, setback is 82.9. Side setback is 132.1. Um, <coughs> okay, parking. There are 15 spaces required for this use, and we'll break that down for you in a minute. Uh, there are 31 provided, so just uh, over double. Total number of employees, or maximum employees per shift is four. Um, total expected customers today per day is five zero. Um, the proposed use is once again to engage in cultivation for medical use, processing and packaging, retail sale of medical. It's important that we keep saying that. A uh, quick history of this. Um, MD Holistics is the applicant. Uh, they're a nonprofit corporation that was set up in July of 2015. Uh, just about a year later, they received their provisional certificate from the state. If you haven't heard of that before, it's basically the state guidance document, um, which uh, reviews the background checks, for example, of everybody that's involved in the company to make sure everybody is clean. Um, and it also sort of announces to the applicants that they're subject to random um, audits and whatnot from the state. Um, okay, so a year later, July 2017, letter of non-opposition from the Board of Selectmen. For those of you that haven't seen that yet, it was a unanimous 3-0, basically tied it to this particular location that basically that's where the selectmen first say yes it's an allowed use at this location so that's when we first sort of were introduced formally with the town although there were plenty of preliminary meetings then in December which is just a few months later uh, they signed a lease for this location um, mid-month also in December 2017 they executed what's called a host community agreement with the town what that is, is it's where um, they restricted the use to medical. Um, that talks about things like certain annual payments to the town, which we've already been through that with you. You've heard about this already. Um, it's where they say they're going to give preferential treatment to Bridgewater residents to both work there, and they're going to ultimately look to hire about oh, eight Why to wouldn't they give it to West Bridgewater residents? Yeah. Why, why are you giving it to another town? What did I just say? Oh, did I say Bridgewater? I'm sorry. West Bridgewater residents. Eight to 16 people. Okay. Thank you, Hugh. 
um, for both employees and for the construction. Um, and all, all the construction is mainly inside, and we'll get into that in a minute. And it's also where they have to um, provide an operation and maintenance plan, which is actually regulated by the state, which talks about um, public health and public safety. Now, just really quick into the relief required, and then I'll introduce everybody that's coming. Uh, there's three things required. There's site plan review, which you've all are extremely familiar with. That's under 7.2. Same as with everybody else. Uh, a special permit for the use under 7.5, which you're also very familiar with. And the one new one is 7.8.0, which is for medical marijuana treatment centers. So I'll break that down a little bit more than the others. Um, so I'll start with the medical marijuana. The things that we have to show you are, one, that it's contained within a building or structure. It is going to be entirely contained with inside. There's no outside use at all. That the gross floor area is between 2,500 and 10,000 square feet. The building is 7,440 square feet, so we fall right in the middle of that. Um, the hours of operation, <coughs> the town's bylaws say it has to be from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. during the um, week, including Saturday, actually. Um, they're proposing not 8 a.m., but 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., uh, so they're not early risers. Um, uh, no smoking on the premises. Um, I think that's obvious. There can't be any smoke on the premises, but my suggestion perhaps would be to throw it in as a condition, but it's not really needed because it's right in your, right your bylaw. Um, all right. It can't be located in a building where there's residential units or, with a, with a, or inside of a moving structure. Obviously, that's not the case here. This is the only use. Um, uh, there needs to be a sign for registration cards only issued by the Mass the public, uh, Department of Public Health. That's regulated as well. I think this is just a reiteration of the state uh, regulation, but on the plans, um, there is an indication of a placard outside the door with that sign. Um, then um, moving through the medical marijuana treatment center bylaw, there's just a couple other things um, that the requirements and conditions set forth for the special permit of Inmed. I'll, I'll go back into that in a sec. The um, facility is designed to minimize any adverse visual or economic impacts on abutters. If you're familiar with this location, there's really no abutters. There's somebody that stockpiles um, large amounts of outdoor stuff here, and that's it. And then there's everybody driving by really fast on 24. Um, the facility demonstrates that it will meet all the permitting requirements of applicable agencies within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I'll just, so we don't get bogged down on details, I'll just say we've met with police chief um, a few times on this. I believe he's approved the uh, security plan, which is extremely detailed. The reason why we're not bringing it to you tonight is because it's not supposed to be part of the public record, but I'm sure Hugh will confirm for us that he is pleased. Um, and then the final one under the medical marijuana is the applicant has satisfied all the requirements and conditions of this bylaw, which is sort of general. So quickly going back through site plan review and special permit. Of course, you know this, but uh, for the special permit, it's an appropriate location. It's probably the only location where it could go within a, a few other potentials in town. Um, will not adversely affect the neighborhood. There will be no nuisance or hazard to vehicles or pedestrians or volume greater than the capacity of the streets. Adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided, and access to the site over streets is, is appropriate. Um, I've left that one for last because it ties in with the site plan review um, section that I believe everybody is going to want to talk about, which is Maple Street. So Greg, can you switch it to um, 
the maple uh, the, your plan that shows the Maple Street. So <clears throat> I know this is a sore spot for the town, so I wanted to leave it for last. Um, this is um, a plan that shows the completion of the roadway um, all the way from Pleasant to the actual use. Um, there's also adequate room for a turnaround if, if um, this security gate here should ever be closed. There's room for a turnaround, which is shown here. For I have seen that before. I ended up a little while ago. And um, <coughs> my proposal for this, um, something nobody really knows is um, if and when they are approved by the town, there's a very long period of red tape that they have to go through with the state. So um, what I suggested is um, ultimately a uh, um, uh, there's also a grow period inside the building, obviously. Nobody thinks about this beforehand. I'm sort of learning as I go as well. But it's not like um, you approve it and they're open a week later. Um, there's a long period of red tape with the state. And then there's a long period of growing the product. Um, in Massachusetts, they have to do everything from seed to what's the sale. term seed to sale so there's a tremendous period of time so I would humbly suggest that um, since there are so many contingencies after this that um, ultimately a, a um, conditional certificate of occupancy be issued so they certainly can't open but they can start that long process with the state and um, that is regulated um, by 780 CMR 111.3, which says that you're allowed to do that. Um, and obviously, they could not open to the public until this was all done. And, um, and you know, they'd gone through that long process with the state. I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to uh, tell you that we have lots of people here to answer your questions. The um, engineer, Greg Driscoll, um, the future operator, hopefully, Mike Dreyer, uh, traffic engineer, Jason Adams, um, owner, um, Joe Mullen, and the property owner. Uh, so I'll sit down and start answering your questions. And we'll OK, start. since you brought a traffic engineer, I know a lot of these that started up, in fact, I, I drove I happened to be in Brookline and, and saw theirs where they were using shuttle buses to bring the people people and I I, I know yours is a little bit different uh, c could you just address the uh, traffic I know what what they have said and I, I assume that uh, this application is based on your findings but could you just Correct. you know uh, uh, we're looking for a comfort level so. sure yep um, for the record my name is Jason Adams I'm a traffic engineer with McMahon Associates, 350 miles Standish Boulevard in Taunton. Um, so we completed a traffic assessment of the area. Uh, we focused on the projected trip generation of the site. We also looked at the existing traffic volumes around the site and completed a safety review of both the site and the surrounding intersection area. Um, I think what's really important to note here is that this is a, being a medical use, it's, it's a much lower trip generator than some of the uh, adult recreational uses that have opened up. So the, the first couple that opened up in the western part of the state, uh, you know, first to market, serving like a, a, a broad uh, regional area, and as more and more opened up, what we've seen is that they've they've gotten lower and lower in terms of their trip generation. Uh, this site in particular, uh, we expect to be a, a very low generator, um, somewhere on the order of magnitude of, um, you know, maybe three to ten visitors per hour, probably more, you know, in the average about five that's what the industry data shows us for trip generation. Um, that's based on a number of studies that have been conducted nationwide where there's uh, you know, a, a greater number of uh, these type of establishments in use. So the, the more there are, the, the fewer people that each one's going to draw. Um, the vehicle trips that we'd expect to, to generate here, we don't feel would have any noticeable impact on the surrounding roadway network. Um, the site has been designed, in our opinion, in a, to provide for safe and efficient 
maneuvers. Um, and really, from a traffic perspective, we don't feel as though this project would would impact operations or safety. How many? Uh, I think I saw somewhere fifty cars. Was what you fifty is probably a conservative number for the over the course of the day, including employee travel. Um, in our in the peak periods, what our industry data shows is that we'd we'd expect between you know probably three to six vehicles in an hour. So so a vehicle every ten to to twenty minutes or so, um, and that's I think in line with general expectations. And that that's probably going to be. Um, fairly consistent over the course of the day so that each you know this, this isn't going to be a site where everybody arrives at one time either it'll be spread out uh, over the course of the day certainly we'd expect there will be more people you know after work in that afternoon peak period um, you know in the middle of Saturday those are probably the, the busiest times but it'll be fairly well spread out across the day um, and that that 50 again is is probably a pretty conservative number when you, you might have you know the, the most across a number of hours Okay, with that in mind if I know this is medical marijuana. Is it any way in the future that it could be uh, want to make it into recreation? Which is, I think that's probably where I saw the the more uh, heavy traffic. No, actually, the host community agreement, um, which has to be signed, but um, um, specifically limits this to medical. Okay. And, uh, yeah, without getting into that. I no, I just wanted it in, 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 the, in the record. So it's in, so, okay. so, so it's in, in the, uh, in the, uh, in, in the record. Um, well, one, of the, one of the things that this, this board has been concerned about is, I, I can't tell you how many years ago the uh, building was put in there and the road was supposed to have been in, improved. They put in a lesser sized building. They didn't build it all out. And, and times were tough. It was during a, a bad economic times. And, and so it never, it never did get done. So you're proposing, and I, I just want to make sure that we're all clear on it, that uh, you hold off doing the construction until you get closer to the from seed to sale, so during the seed you don't to do it, but it'll be ready before. And you're looking for uh, the approval to say that, knowing that until the roadway is done, you will not be getting a full occupancy and a full uh, business. Absolutely. <coughs> Please also keep in mind that the amount of money this applicant has to spend with the state, I mean, just annually, you have to write a check for $50,000 just to keep this going over the past two or three years. So um, they're not going to do anything to ruin that at this point. So um, yeah, per 780 CMR 111.3, you can absolutely condition the certificate of occupancy so no public can go in there. So, yeah. Oh, okay, so it just it, it yeah. will, will be in there. I know that uh, you would send uh, your, your opinion to our town council. We haven't heard back from them yet, but I can, in, in what you're saying, I can see that it is, it, it is, do it is doable and Although it's it's just a gravel road now, it is adequate for somebody going in there. Basically, you just got to be farmers, so you got to get get it, get it started and but before right. it goes in. Okay, just trying to yep. get everything uh, straight. This is the first one of these we've done, and like you say, it'd probably be the last one. So we want to we don't have a chance to to learn and do them any any, any any better. The uh, Roadway, I know initially you were concerned, the engineers were concerned with a couple of the widths, some, some poles, and we all know that it takes a, you, it's almost impossible to get the electric companies to, or actually it's, I believe it's telephone, to come and change them. So, if, so you may have some, some problems there, but is it, uh, is it worthwhile looking into Running an underground where you're going to be doing all the road work, running an underground conduit from Pleasant Street into the 
site w it would give you uh, less chance of any storm. So in the last month we've we've <coughs> lost power <coughs> two times. And you're out you're out on the on the edge of the on the edge of the Hockamock Swamp there, so you'd you'd be the last ones in there. I'm just throwing it out as a as an as an idea where you're doing the uh, you're going to be doing extensive road work in there to put a a, um, a conduit in there, and it would also protect your your alarm system and your uh, uh, your Wi-Fi and, and everything having it underground. I'm just throwing that out as an idea. Um, we haven't heard anything from the, the police chief, but um, I'm sure before we, we do it, we will get get something. Um, okay. can, can I answer your question about, about the road? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is something that I, I'm glad you asked that because I did want to sort of have a discussion very quickly. Um, there's, you are correct in that um, the, there was a previous discussion about the width of the roadway being an issue. And um, we did notice that uh, one of the poles actually would have to be relocated to keep it 20 feet wide throughout um, from Pleasant Street to the entrance. Um, okay, right around the So, uh, one of the sort of feedback items that I, I did want to just quickly get from, from the board is um, if it turns out to not be economically feasible to run uh, underground conduits and if, as you say, it might be difficult to get Verizon back out there, um, is the is there a particular uh, requirement in the bylaw to have it 20 throughout the whole? Well, we, we, we're trying to come up with an uh, adequate way. If if you have, in fact, one of the days I was out there, uh, um, a FedEx trailer truck came came in there to make a delivery. So it wasn't, it wasn't just a little van or something. This was a, a, tra a trailer truck now. Um, I'm not sure what kind of supplies you have and what, what kind, you know, what your vendors will be bringing, bringing in, but we want to see something that, e even though your, your, your traffic counts, is, uh, your engineer has stated are very low, we just want something that's safe. We want something also if uh, fire or emergency personnel have to get in there, there will be plenty of room, but... Uh, uh, the, um, I... I can address that a little bit and might correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the only uh, vendor vehicles are basically the largest thing is a van. Correct. Okay, like a cargo van. Um, and so that is that is something that I did sort of want to get for, for feedback from you. So there's no longer going to be large vehicles um, on the site. So if you felt that uh, what is it, 18 that would, would be added? Yeah. yeah. Um, 18, we can avoid the whole tree that's right there. It would also shrink the impervious surface down a lot. It'll help us with um, um, comments that I believe we got also from um, conservation. Yeah, but you, what you were what just, what just talking was in that area. You're not talking about shrinking the whole thing down, are you? Uh, oh. Shrink the whole thing down would be great. But no, okay, no, that's what I'm that's okay. I, 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 yeah, no, okay, no, no, no I, I'm, I'm not advocating that. I'm, I'm asking a question because I'm almost, as soon as you said you'd save you some amount, because what, what, just going around that one pole, you're going to save about 10 square feet yeah, of surface, which is, yeah. which is a teacup of water. No, I was taught, I figured that you'd want the whole thing to be the same width. No. Oh, okay. okay. No, no, I would, would rather have the width, if you got a, you know, a little narrowing down, yeah, which would be a it, spot right you know, we, we could live with it if, if we have to, but if you okay. would rather see you not not do it, that's why you, th you, you have three three choices. One is to live with it, narrowing it down when you're just getting it. The other is to get them to move the pole, or the other is to go the, the underground, and that's why I, I threw it out. 
because you you're going to be doing so much you're going to be doing some pretty extensive work there on the road so yeah it's out there but I think going back on what we had proved before we kind of knew this is yeah. it was, was how it would, okay. would be but we don't want somebody coming in and uh, being a little drowsy when they come come in and, and, and be clipping the pole. Well, never mind if two cars pass each other and you end up with somebody sitting in the ditch. Yeah. Okay. So we would be looking for, and it'd be something for the engineers to come up with some uh, safety precautions, you know, uh, you know, putting reflectors on it, uh, something to catch their eye so they, mm -hmm. so they don't drive drive into it, so that would be a, uh, okay. an engineering thing, but no, just throwing it up. Um, also, in there, in your, your, your uh, proposal, you're stating that, uh, and this is, you've given me so much paper, I'm not sure which, <laughs> which one it is, but it's, it's a summary, and in summary, the applicant is planning to move into the existing building. All other uses and tenants are vacated. The property has been <coughs> occupied and other various tenants since. They have been proposed and complete uh, as it is. Okay. So you are going to be the only tenant on this, this site? Um, yes. Uh, originally when we came to you in June, I think probably we weren't sure about the solar company that's in there now. But MD Holistics is going to be taken over the whole, the whole okay. building. So it would be just this building on this site? Just this? Well, yes. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, you know, that would be a whole different process, Hugh. But I mean, uh, MD Holistics is going to take every single yeah. inch of that. Well, well it, it opens, it comes, all things being relative, it comes back in. If you've got, if somebody else came in there and they had a high traffic, it 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 uh, affect your your numbers. So Absolutely. so we we're we're going on his numbers. We're going in here that and tenants are vacating. Yes. Right in, right in your proposal. So yeah. This will be the only yes. only tenant in here. Okay. That just so that it's it's understood because it was never quite uh, okay. understood before. Um, What what is the thickness of the, the pavement, uh, Greg, that you're proposing in in here? Do you have um, a should be three to three base and two top. Yeah, we're showing it's gonna have base uh, two and a half base, one and a half top, but we can should be three and two as our bylaw. We can do that. okay. That's our standard road. Okay. Okay. Um In here, and I and I've read this a couple times. Did you propose the wording for the uh, uh, conditional uh, approval? Is it in here? Okay. And then, okay. Special conditions of approval prior to the opening of business of medical. Uh, We'll seek a conditional approval. Okay, in fact, you read it earlier, didn't you? Hmm? <laughs> you, you read, I think you read this in the I, pretty I, much earlier. I did, yeah. The no signage permitted on the site other than that owned by the applicant. Um, okay, <laughs> that, that brings up something. There, when you do open this, there will be signage? Actually, um, just a small amount of it right on the building. The uh, CMR um, requires it to say um, that you have to have a uh, medical card. Mm -hmm. Is And that, that's all that we're proposing. Okay. Be nothing uh, on the street? No. At the end of Pleasant Street directing up that way? Or? I think directional signage is probably a good idea. Uh, yeah, I mean, like now, one of the tenants, there's a sign that says Newport, and okay. point in that direction, but it's only. I think. Um, I mean, you get down there. Some 
Some people drive and get to the end of that street and wonder whether the world's going to come to an end. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, you're talking about, especially if you if it's this time of year when it gets dark. Right. You get down there and you see 300 eyeballs from the deer looking at you in the field, <laughs> <laughs> and that happens. <laughs> no, it, it's true. I think that uh, directional signage is probably imperative. It's not on the site, um, obviously. No, but you know, called out for the sign. <coughs> Isn't that card sign? That's yeah. Um. You know, we're not looking for a neon sign with a big arrow going. No. You know, get get your marijuana here type <laughs> type of thing. But we we uh, you, you, we want something that, that makes it so that your 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 clientele, your customers can can find you, you rather than driving around, getting getting lost down there because they take a right hand turn and go down. They go the other end, they're going to find a big hole. Yeah, <laughs> where, the, where the river goes. So, um, I, I think what the necessity there would be, they have to be careful that they don't advertise. So, um, I think it would just be directional only uh, at the um, at the intersection of Pleasant and Maple. And so then, here, here. I think probably there should be one at the entrance of, of the actual uh, parking area, too. Okay, so the state law has kicks in here on, on what you can yes. do. Okay. How about street lights? It's dark. I mean, you got the, how many poles have you got coming in? Uh, we have one, two, three. <laughs> like, on the ones on Maple Street, maybe every other pole? That would Especially be the new ones that they've got now, these new LED ones are probably the best street lights I think they've had in a hundred years. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Where they've replaced them in different towns, they they give a good broad light compared to the the incandescent ones that mm -hmm. you're lucky if you can see it lit at the top of the pole. <laughs> but I've noticed a lot of places they're doing the changeovers now, and you, it's actually giving you a street light. Yeah. yeah. But for and the direct, and they're pretty much down, downward yeah. directional. Yeah. yeah. It does. It isn't something that's up in the air. It comes down. But it gives you a 50, 60 feet on either Spread. side. So. <laughs> so there's three. We could do in the middle or well, the beginning and the end. I don't know what works. I think the beginning is kind of important. Is there one at the end, though? I think there is one on Pleasant Street. Oh. Right near the hydrant or something, yeah, I believe. There you go, then. So, uh, and we're, and we're, we're kind cautious. We don't want to glow. Right. Because yeah. we you know everything which... Your, your engineer is very familiar with, with it. You know, down making down. sure that they're, they're, they're down. I'm just amazed at these new LEDs. I don't know if you paid attention. Brockton's done a lot of them. They've converted them a lot over, and they're not bright. I mean, bright per looking into them, but they light. They just yeah. the, they they're mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of them on the west side of Brockton. They must be in the process of changing over or something. They're um, unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, does anybody else have any any concerns or questions? Yeah, the uh, can I hear correctly you plan on you're gonna grow, package, and sell retail? No. Uh, well speak to it go ahead. Uh, Michael Carrier, one seventy eight Bay State Road in Rehoboth. I'm the director for MD Holistics, the applicant. Uh, so the cultivation, uh, processing and manufacturing, packaging, and medical retail use will all take place fully located within the building. Um, the language retail gets confused with the new adult use recreational marijuana sales that are... Yeah, no, I, I, I understand I'm talking about medical, I'm just saying yep, so retail be, as opposed there to... There will be a retail use for it so that patients can come to the facility okay, to now, purchase it. I, I always thought there was a different set of uh, regulations for, for a, uh, a grow facility. Uh, under the town bylaws? No, under the state. Under the state? Um, <coughs> no, they're, um, they're permitted to all be co-located in the same Yeah, facility. okay, I didn't know that. I always thought they had to be, uh, Satellite had to be separate. Yeah. No, they can be co-located. Uh, economically, it doesn't always make sense for a lot of folks um, that, that operate to scale, but we're um, kind of a small footprint. Okay, so yeah, this is for, for all the activity, it seems yeah. like a small footprint. This is... This it is large is, enough. But uh, again, we can, um, the business plans that we've 
submitted to the state, um, they kind of fall in line with our expectation for the size and capacity of the facility. Um, so we don't, um, and that's how we can sustain on the 30 to 50 trips per day um, to make hmm. the business functional. Do you want to just walk them through your sure. work plan, really? So no yeah, it's a little small, but I'll sh just so I can. Oh yeah, what do you do by age? You realize how small it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so each one of these rooms that's proposed represents a phase of cultivation or plant growth, um, and so this is essentially where all the plant growth will take place okay. in its different phases. Uh, there's an area to dry and process. Um, you know, their. Um, herbaceous herbs, so the way that they dry is similar to like a tea leaf or a hop or something like that versus like a stone fruit and apple, all the different horticultural methods. Um, and then we have an area proposed to do all of our processing and any kinds of extraction or, and packaging. And then from there, they're fed into the retail area. So this is the waiting room. It's a secured vestibule. We like it to feel like a waiting room, but it's a secured vestibule. Um, and then once you're in here, you're queued through a receptionist right here. Yep. The receptionist can act also as the agent or the tender who um, is going to provide you with the, the cannabis once you decide what you want to purchase, etc. So in effect, as a patient, you come in here, you wait here, and then you're queued into this actual sales floor, and then you're queued back out. These are all double locking, interlocking doors. Um, everything's protected through physical barriers and surveillance. And then as an employee, um, we have a, a small area where we can load materials here, and um, we do all of our cultivation activities in these rooms. The vault is where anything that's considered finished products or monies or anything like that's locked and secured in the vault, and that, from a build-out standpoint, has some pretty strict state regulations in terms of penetration times and things to that effect. We're going to also be occupying this space, but not for cannabis use. This will be more for our offices and our, you know, shipping and receiving. And then, as as we feel the that we can sustain an expansion, we'll come back to the so board and start to shipping and receiving. So product going out, not yeah. cannabis products. No. Yeah, not cannabis okay. products. This will be totally um, inert. No cannabis products allowed in there, and okay. that'll be pretty strictly regulated through the. Because I thought to on on. On the growth facilities, I thought there were regulations about venting at certain heights and, and things of that nature. Um, there are a lot of different considerations, um, and so we, we're the architecture firm that we're working with is a uh, the same group that's permitted um, the company in Lowell and in Boston on Milk Street. So we have a pretty good idea from on, them on, on Milk, Milk Street. Well. Yeah. Some valuable real estate. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting, they, they, they don't do as much business there as they do in some of their other <coughs> locations. It's competing with the guy, two gone is down. Right, right, at the old rug factory or something like that. But let me know if they have other, other questions about how it's No, I just, I, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't realize that all three stages could be in one location. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they, by law, had to be, had to be separate. So you're going to make the product here, the, the things you always read about gummies or brownies or uh, whatever. We're, we're going to make uh, a flour product and we're going to do a solventless concentrate that could be put into the vaporizing pens if that ever, you know, pans out with all the bands that's going on with vaporizing. Um, but we're not going to have a kitchen in there per se to process and make edibles. Okay. But we have, we are through the state law allowed to have relationships with all the other operators and there's, you know. So if you're going to, if you're going to Medically retail edibles, you, you buy them from another grower. Right, and then we stock them and put okay. them on our shelves, and that's all regulated through the state and their inventory control. All right, I'm coming. I'm, I'm new to this. No, no, please. Everybody We're happy to don't answer a lot of different don't worry questions. About it. The our, our use through the state shows just, you know, so that I'm not pulling it out of thin air, but that we're doing the cultivation, what's referred to as manufacturing, which is processing it beyond its flower phase, and the uh, dispensary, um, all at this site. So that's how the state has us recorded and what's identified on a provisional site. Now, do you have, I, I know you mentioned you had a security plan. You've gone over that with the, the chief. 
Yeah, we had uh, Chief Flaherty to the site. Maybe so we don't get into detail on that. No, I won't. Is there, a, is there during operating hours, is there an on-site security person? Uh, we have two general managers that have certain security requirements um, to interface with emergency response. But we rely on um, our surveillance, uh, any kind of alarm trips, and the physical barriers that are in place. Okay, so because I know there are some places that have what's more or less a security guard, a rent a car. Yep. Yep. Who's there at all times? Yeah, we're gonna um, propose and and hope you know to kind of before we get open for sales because there's a long lead time on cultivation and manufacturing. Just out of curiosity, you mentioned seed to sale. Was that was that the term you used? Yep. What's the time frame roughly? So from the day we are approved after constructing what we need to, um, it's approximately six to eight months until we can actually um, make a sale. So we have to make enough product, and then we have to have the state test all the product. Okay, so it's not it's not as simple as plant it, harvest it. Yeah. So, so no, there, there it's, are steps it's in It's a pretty in intensive process. Um, just to begin the manufacturing of the products that we intend on making available for patients. And then we have to get um, an approval, a sales ready approval from the state. And that's contingent on the testing of all the product to make sure there's no you know, pathogens and okay. residual pesticides. Now this, this is kind of off, off track a little bit, but you had mentioned you know, electric and utilities and that sort of thing. This, this kind of operation is a large Power consumer, is that correct? I mean, is it a? Uh, there's a the, well, I should say it like this: the, the facility currently has plenty of power already. It does. Okay, that was kind of my question. Use. Yeah, um, but yes, the answer is I'd say half of our um, overhead goes into utility consumption and, and the human effort in terms of payroll and labor, um, because it's something that requires a little bit of finesse as kind of a, a precious commodity that uh, is perishable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Will you have a backup generator type system? I was going to say, we were required to, so yep. we, and we'll consider the economic impacts to us on how to how to address our plan with the road, whether we consider underground utilities or moving the pole back, which can be like moving mountains, um, and whether or not we can just, um, you know, allow a small area where there's a little bit of a pinch, which, you know, Greg and I have talked about that kind of naturally may slow traffic a little bit while still being... Um, beyond the minimum requirements, um, we, we need to have generators to keep our security on as the primary mm -hmm. function from the state's consideration. Um, but for us, it also allows us to continue to have normal course of operations for anywhere from 72 hours to a week. So the plants themselves are very resilient, um, and as long as you can give them a little bit of what they need, you can stabilize them. They may not be as efficient without all the utilities that go into the lighting fixtures and all the bells and whistles and the uh, HVAC controls, but the uh, long answer is yes, we will have significant um, generator backup for power failures. Even I remember a couple years ago in March um, when we had just gotten into the building, uh, we had that big storm that took down tons of trees and power was out for several days. So you know that the facility is vulnerable to that like everything is. I had a, some friends that lived on Pleasant Street and whenever it was a, a storm uh, and we'd lost power, they were the one of the last one. ones yeah. to get it back. Yeah. yeah, we noticed, what was that, like four or five days when the shop was shut down. If you're a West Bridgewater resident, we can give you first priority on a job. <laughs> if it's not a conflict. <laughs> and at least that this man knows what conflict down. right now. It won't be later. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was a plug, that was a plug for himself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ruin it. Okay. Any okay. Uh, further concern or any further? Anybody else got anything to, to say to, to before we start talking? Oh, it looks, it looks well thought out. Of course, I suppose to invest that kind of money, it better be. <coughs> Don't steal all my ideas there. The workflow there is proprietary. Uh, <laughs> too late. <laughs> <laughs> Photographic <laughs> memory. <laughs> okay. Rob was kind enough to give us a road map. He filled out all the, all the requirements and what his responses 
Uh, I think probably the, although a lot of them he has already read into the record, but what I will uh, do, we'll put this into the into the record, but I, I will go go through it so that we can we can uh, do it. Uh, act on it. Uh, for the site plan review, which is on this section, Don, I'm going to give you this, so don't, don't kill yourself writing. Mm -hmm. A site plan review guideline. Protection of visual park, uh, visual corridors, will no, and it says there'll be no additions to the existing building. And uh, you are, you're in an, an industrial area adjacent to uh, uh, the, the, the Commonwealth that owns the the Huckamock Swamp area adjacent to you, and you got a highway on the other side, and then you got a, somebody building mountains of, of bark mulch on the other side of you. So I really don't think we have to worry too much. Use of landscaping offenses to establish in the property adjacent, and, and we reiterated that. Provisions of open space and pedestrian amenities. Shoot trees. But Okay, and, and you've, you've got a parking lot and you've got, so your workers have, can go out and walk around there. The arrangement of access points, service roads. Prior to opening the business, maybe soon will be improved per the roadway improvement plan um, in order to into proper plan. We'll seek a conditional certificate of occupancy limiting. Occupancy to the uh, MD, which is what we had talked about this is something probably in the preparation of it. We want to make sure we check with town council to have him approve the the wording of it so that we we get it. I I don't think it's that that big a thing, but if we're going to do it, let's let's do it correctly. Yep. Uh, e ease of access. Uh, okay, you're talking about the previously approved plan, which initially has to be done before you open. For under, okay, provision for underground, there are no substantial revisions to the previous proofs, okay. Okay, so in here, but you're, go you're going to run the numbers on the underground, see if it is a, is a viable thing. Uh, G, provisions for surface runoff, okay, that brings up, there is a letter from the um, Conservation Commission. Did you get a copy of this third day of October the 7th? Um, where they, they they had some concerns and uh, so you're go you're going before them. Have you had a uh, submittal yet to the conservation? No, not yet. We haven't spoken to the conservation. Okay, so we get feedback from this board first. So okay, so that is, that is something you you you're aware of them and uh, they usually so <coughs> you can you can note the the law that they're aware of it and they and they plan on complying with the with the interest of the Conservation Commission. B, for the special admit the site is specific and appropriate location such use. The use is developed and operated will not adversely affect the neighborhood. There will be no nuisance or hazards to vehicles. Pedestrians are volume greater than the capacity of streets affected. Adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for the proper operation of the proposed use. Access site or Access to the site over streets is appropriate for the type of vehicles being used. The use is uh, appropriate to the hydrology, natural topography, soils, etc. Um, the use will not. Um, okay, uh, uh, with the uh, yeah on that one number six. Uh, is there any waste coming out of this? Uh, I. Uh, uh, or is it any any stockpiling or, um, or anything? Mm, again, this is Michael Trayer speaking for the record. Um, there is no excess of uh, plant-related fertilizers or anything like that. Um, the only uh, waste would be normal in, uh, cleaning supplies for just normal sanitary measures inside the building. Um, the building has a tight tank already so for instance cleaning floors and walls um, we push water into the tight tank and I think that's the, the, the way we intended on handling that but from the use standpoint as it relates to the cultivation and manufacturing there's no um, excess chemical use or anything like that and the 
application of water specifically to plants is measured in a way so that there's no additional runoff? That answers the question. Okay, good. Yeah, that's section number seven. Okay. And for the uh, R&D, the, the Board of Reviews, the proposed project that relates to general requirements. And we have to make mandatory findings. Uh, the requirements and conditions set for us above if a special might have been met. The facility is designed to minimize adverse visual economic impacts on a butter's young. Yeah. The facility demonstrated will meet all the permitting requirements of all applicable agencies of the Commonwealth. Applicant has satisfied all requirements and conditions of this bylaw. I will entertain a motion to find a positive finding for all of what I just read. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? Okay, for the, the record, seeing this is a special permit, we have to have a, uh, a super majority. In other words, we have to have four of the five member board. We have four members here. So for the record, all four of us have voted in the affirmative. Okay, with, with that, now we have to come up with any uh, conditions. The, the conditions, the first condition will be, we found in favor of all these. Now we have to vote to approve it. And we have to, I guess we, we did, your site plan review, we already did in that one. But we have to come up with, uh, and we'll have town council review the the uh, temporary or conditional approval. And I, I don't, does anybody have any problem with that? This is, you know, this is gonna be, what you said, eight, eight months, so you're probably gonna be looking at a year. But by, by the time yeah, I mean, we everything still will be done. We won't be able to develop construction drawings and building permit until we get a special permit approval. So that adds on to the actual process. So I would say we're a minimum of 12 months. Okay. The, the, the only thing um, I'd like to see in there is, I know with modern equipment they can, they can build any t all 12 months of the year. But to get a good good job, you do it during the, the normal building uh, season. So uh, I'd, I'd like to condition it that the the road will be uh, the work be done and and be ready for paving for October. Jim, is that a good a good date? I know I know they yeah. they're still doing in November, but I'd rather. I'd, ra I'd rather see them pave it in July. Yeah. yeah but but um, uh, September, October, what's, what's a reasonable date? Um, I mean, October, yeah, I mean, you could pave up to November 15th, but October 15th. Okay. So um, we'll, 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 we'll make it to the, so that way you'll, hopefully you, you'll be where you got, uh, Nine plus a couple more, so you've got almost a, a year. So hopefully you'll be well enough in the line that you'll have a, a comfort feeling to see it done. What we don't want to see is you're coming in, uh, you know, the first of December, and uh, you got a, the, the frost is coming, the snow is coming, you're, you're putting down pavement, and it's and, and it's breaking up, and. Uh, uh, in fact, you're probably going to have to put a bond or surety up with the, the town for doing work in, in, the, in, in the road because it, it is, it is a, an ancient way. It's, uh, it's the way it has been for 
the last 300 years, there hasn't been too many improvements on it until, until now. But uh, so we, we will want to see, that'll be one of the conditions that it will, the work will have to be done during the time and, and be paved by October 15th. One question, I mean, uh, you know, we were talking about necking it down because of that utility pole. That's really not our call, is it though? It's a public way that would be up to the highway department. Well, uh, yeah, but we, we, I, I think we the, planning, the planning board gets to decide what it is, but yeah, it, it is. Yeah, so ultimately the, if, if, if the DPW wants that pole moved and they want the 20-foot width, it's their call. I, I just don't want to mislead yeah. folks to think that, oh, yeah, the planning board said that we can neck it down. That's not, ultimately not okay. ours. In fact, I would, I think I've kind of made my opinion. I don't want to see it neck down. I'd like to see it go with the under, underground and, and as everybody else. I, I, uh, I don't like the neck down. I mean, I think it's going to be a hazard if you all yeah. of a sudden you do it anyways. But, I mean, it's... You know, again, I think that's got to be something that needs to be discussed with the, the DPW. Okay, or maybe we should maybe we should make that determination now. It's either either underground or the pole is relocated. Make that a condition. Because one of the things that, that is up to us is is safe access to the to the property. That that that's in the Subdivision Control Act, right? In the enabling, mm -hmm. in the in the preamble. And so th that's that's a, a call, and, and uh, you're you're qualified to be to make the concerns. <coughs> why don't we why don't we just make that one of the conditions? We either it, it, it either is 20 feet throughout or it's on the ground. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's since that's not paved right now. It's not a. I mean, the bigger cost is if it's paved and you have to dig up pavement. And yeah, that's why know, right now it's I, just that's a why matter I brought it up. It's they're going to be they're going to have to dig out a because I'm sure it's a lot of unsuitable material when they mm. get if going the in there. If the pole crew came in there, all they would do if they had it would be just dig behind that pole with, and then kick the whole just take the whole thing Switch off over our thing and just move the whole thing because it's a straight line pole. You're right. It's not like it's a, yeah. you know, so it, if, you know, if it was a corner or something like that, but it's it's just a matter of moving the whole pole sideways. Mm. So it isn't as big a, that big It shouldn't be, it's just getting them to do it. Yeah. Well, it was now I think, to do it. I think all pole movements is in the region now, it's national grid. I think the telephone company has given up. Yeah. They gave it up. Is doing no pole work now. National grid sets the pole and then they put their wires on. Um, yeah. If we, if we instead of the underground offering, can we start from the pole in the middle of the road, which is far enough away? Yeah. Rather than the whole road? I guess we're here. Yeah. There's no one there. So whichever one is out of the. Yeah, that'd be a. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I, I have a question. I'm yeah. Mark Plassey, owner at 63 Maple. I was, um, I paid for those poles to be put in. And at the time they were put in, I argued with, with the um, with Verizon. I said, they seem awful close to the street. Is there a setback that the town requires the poles to be? I think they were misplaced right from the get-go. Okay. Is there a requirement you said when you're talking to utility company? I, I, unfortunately, a lot of them are right in, right in the, right up against the mm. curb, right in the, the gutter lines. Mm. Some, some of, sometimes it's, okay. but, but that's on a straight road. What what Jim is concerned with is you get a straight road and all of a sudden you got one that's out the there. Last one, yeah. And it catches a mirror, you know, so get two people not comfortable <coughs> driving past and one catches a mirror or catches the thing on it. But yeah. those, that pole, those poles, looks like they went out there through dots. Uh, yeah, I was pretty upset when it was kind of like, you know, sure it did us. So, uh, Greg, as, as you were saying, uh, if, if you wanted to, to catch it at, at one of these these two here and then go underground, which would, would cut the, the distance down, you know, you, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll leave it the option. Is it in underground from that last pole anyways? Yeah. So it would be extending at what, a 
150 feet, Maybe 100 one, feet. One, one pole line. One pole line, 100 yeah. feet, I think, roughly is what the distance between them is. I mean, that's what the standard pole length is, 100 to 150 yeah. feet. Yeah, somewhere around there. Because I know this, when I, 300 years ago, worked for a phone company <laughs> in the 70s. We used to we used to have to use a horse drawn wagon. <laughs> I mean, there might be the transform. I don't know if the transformers on that last pole, and then if you'd taken they that could off, they just move the transformer back. Yeah. Pole. Okay, so so one of the conditions will be that uh, either the the poles will be moved, relocated, or from a, a previous pole, one of the uh, poles in front of it will go underground all the way. Okay, um, okay, we should address the signage that the, the signage will be just of a directional, directional yeah. uh, uh, minimal, yeah, okay, minimal, minimal directional signage, right. but you, you should have some on there, and uh, That this will be the only, and another one would be, this will be the only uh, tenant on the site. Any other things we we should be addressing for the? We'll revise the payment thickness. Yes. Or yep. Yep. Okay. Street lights. Yeah, street water lights. Water and water than what I would left. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> But adequate lighting without without causing a glow. Although I, I don't think that you don't see the, the the lights with the big glows the way you used no, to. It's just, I mean, yeah, these, new, these new LEDs, it's amazing mm -hmm. what they are. Yeah, but no, 25, 30 years ago, that that used to be the thing. Is the glow. You tell when the random uh, dog track was open. Oh yeah, yeah, you could see it. We could see it from here. Yeah. Okay, so, um, okay, so we'll need uh, a motion to uh, agree with the conditions. Oh, no, I draw, I draw, I draw the only conditions. Um, I'm sorry, is that under like the site plan? Dude, this is this is. This is for the whole thing. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it'll be the. It'll be the, you know, the. We are actually already did for the site plan. We we went okay. through all all of those things. Um, so this would be for the conditions. So we have a motion. Did we have a second? Did Tony, did you say? Him? Did you second it, Tony? Yeah. You must. Have. Okay. Uh, I don't remember. I know I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's getting late. Uh, okay, so the uh, motion is to ap approve the conditions. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The vote is unanimous of the four present. Okay, now we need uh, a vote to approve the overall uh, special permit. So moved. Second. All, those in, all, all of those in favor? Aye. Yep. Aye. The vote is unanimous of the four present. Okay, gentlemen. Okay, so as soon as we get the uh, uh, special permit written, and we'll I'll, I'll run it by you, so that uh, make sure that uh, uh, we got everything that we we need. We filed with the town clerk, and we'll be off and running. And that'll kickstart the appeal period. Yeah. We'll yes. Get it as soon as, as soon as it goes, as soon as she date stamps it, that starts it. And we'll you. make you proud. We appreciate okay. it. You know, this is new and, you know, first time for all this stuff, so we appreciate everybody's consideration. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Appreciate it. You too. Take Good luck. You got more? Got more action? You guys want to go home now? I know. He's got to stay. Hey, Greg's a glutton for punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I have four in East Bridgewater last week. He's a glutton. Thanks again. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Greg put a good thing together for you, so you, you've got it all there. Uh, with it, yeah, white, white, white only, because uh, uh, we want the, the wording check there, and mm. and uh, we we, them, we don't want it. We don't want it uh, to miss anything. Well, that's yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, no, good. Right. Good point. Is, is the rest of the board in concur with that? that we'll, we'll send this one to town council to have him yeah. prepare the. Uh, I think it's good idea. Okay. okay. Don has law degree only goes so far. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's. It's, uh, it's, you know, the other ones are pretty much. Yeah, they're. they're yeah. Cooking the Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah. But this one just, uh, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, no, no, Rob has put an awful lot into it, and as as you and I both know, he has been delivering us a lot of mm -hmm. stuff exactly. for us to think think about. Okay, so we're running a little behind. It is now 9.28, and this, we're going to open the 8.30. For the record, I'll read the legalese. Town of West Bridgewater notice of public hearing. Notice is hereby given pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 9, Section and Section 4.4, Contract to Steward Yard, Section 4.6, Water Resource Protection District, Section 7.2, Site Plan, and uh, Section 7.5, Special Permit of the West Bridgewater Zone Bylaws of West Bridgewater. Plan will hold a public hearing on November 6, 2019, at 8.30 in the McDonald Brown Conference Room, submitted by MJM Construction to discuss a contractor's storage yard to be located at 586, 586 Manley Street. A special permit is required for the contractor's storage yard and for activity in the Water Resource Protection District. Site plan review is part of the special permit process. A copy of the proposal is available at the Office of Town Clerk for a review, signed by the Planning Board. With that being said, Mr. Driscoll, I will turn it over to you. All right. Good evening, everyone. Craig Driscoll, Construction Engineering, here representing MJM Construction tonight. Um, so, um, anybody want to copy a plan? We got plans here. No, there's another one on the plan. Okay. okay. If you're happy. Good. All right, so the applicant, uh, MGM Construction, which is to convert the existing dwelling here on and, um, 586 Manley Street um, in West Bridgewater to a, uh, an office for his construction business. And he also is looking to, this one to work on this overall plan right here is in the wrong spot. I already kind of changed that in Canada, it should be right through here. Um, so, this existing dwelling, um, I believe it was used for, the, for our home business before as well, the previous occupant. Um, looking to convert this into an office and build this warehouse garage building uh, right next to it. Um, so, this uh, existing building's footprint will not be changed. Um, closed garage is 60 feet by 100 feet. Um, and is located just south of the existing building, um, about 15 feet away. A uh, new parking lot will be constructed, consisting of 38 spaces right in front of the, the uh, building. Uh, that we're going to also intend to construct a 24 foot wide gravel access way to the rear of the property, um, where future work um, will be done under previously issued order conditions. So this wetland right here, um, previous property owner, Spadia's, uh, Joe Spadia, 
at our company um, go to conservation and get a um, order conditions for the work to relocate this wetland to this area down in here. So there's a replication plan and everything in place for doing that work. He wants to get his business up and going. He wants to get in there and move his business from Brockton into West Bridgewater. So this is the first. So this is Spadia himself? This no, this is uh, MJM Construction. I believe they've already passed papers at this point. Okay. So I think he owns the property now. Um, Manny uh, um So he Manny wants to get his business up and running in here, build this, build that, build the parking lot, and have this um, construction yard. Um, he'll have he'll do this work for the relocation of the wetland after he's settled, and with all this land back in here, he'll probably be back before you guys again for something else um, in the future. Well, he, with with when he relocates, that's going to pretty much uh, limit his activity to the, that rear portion, isn't it? Uh, so this wetland right here is going to move back to here, so that's yeah. going to open all this area up. Yeah, but but right along in here, isn't that going to limit any activity out out here? So all his activity be from here forward. Correct. Yep. Yeah, this is a there's a floodplain line here right now, and. This is the 100 foot buffer. So there's, you know, there's a 50 foot note charge that uh, I don't have on right now, but you know, there's there's a portion of this that'll be able to use. But from here back, will be. Yeah, it's all wetlands. When he relocates that over to here, mm -hmm. now he's got a he's got a barrier there. So even though he has some upland here, he really hasn't. Got, all right. so yeah, yeah. There's so so pretty much. So yeah, he's he's, he's, right, he's pretty much limited. So everything will be okay. Yeah. Well, it says located at 586 Manley Street, um, just south of the Brockton line, and Route uh, 24 is behind the properties on the opposite side of the street. Um, it's a little bit better here. Um, Zero Belmont uh, Manley Street turns into Liberty Street where the uh, Brockton Post Office is right up the street there. Um, <coughs> so. There's an existing solar field, if you guys are familiar with that, um, to the north on this property over here. And going this way, there's more industrial property and then um, Turnpike Street, the, the small section of Turnpike Street that's in West Bridgewater. And a little bit of a river in there, too. Yeah, oh yeah. Very good point. Uh, with the uh, Coisa Brook coming right through. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, so they uh, intend to use the newly constructed um, garage warehouse building to maintain their equipment, store tools, and construction materials. Uh, they're an excavation type contractor. Um, so uh, he's not afraid of uh, any kind of fill or anything like that that may be associated with the project. Um, at least slopes and everything. Just just to keep it clean, we're, we're trying to keep out of the 100 foot buffer to the um, the isolated wetland that's going to be re relocated in the future. So, uh, and the newly converted office building will serve as the office for the business. Uh, and we're showing adequate parking for office staff and um, the warehouse staff. Uh, is this one protection? Yep. Uh, we're our calculations show that we require 29 parking spaces and we're th showing 38 on the property right now. Um, we're proposing two infiltration basins for the um, stormwater. One right here. Uh, it's going to be built as a permanent, but as he develops the property, it'll probably get moved and pushed back further in some future phase that may that will hopefully happen. Okay, do, don't you have how from there to the top? How, how much elevation? Because I know you got rip wrap in there. Yep. Uh, see, the total slope is 103, 12 by feet, and this is 107, 108. The, the top of the berm along the that is one away. Okay. And you have another one up here? Yep. Okay. 
the site slopes from the road this way. It's kind of the way that the property already is, and it's an existing building. It's not ideal. That's why I opted for a uh, double grade catch basin. What's the material in that area? Um, is it sandy? Yeah, it wasn't bad. Um, I have the septic plan almost ready to go. I just need to get the water line, existing <coughs> water line from the water department, and then I can submit to Porter Health for that. Uh, it comes through here somewhere. There was a connection from the water line to the barn that the owner just met with the water department about this week. Uh, I guess there was no meter on it, so they're going to rectify that situation. Um, so Shocking. Yeah. So the uh, proposed septic system, uh, it's not shown on the plan yet. This is kind of schematic. Is going to go right in here and the um, surveyor right in here. So there's existing cesspool here and here. So there's two on opposite sides of the building. We're going to connect it around back to a pump and pump it up to the, the primary system to be located right here. Uh, the, the larger basin located here, which is going to take the, uh, the runoff from the property, uh, from the parking lot and the building, and then uh, have it in my um, drainage report, but another portion of the runoff will go to this basin. Um, so the stormwater is designed for the stormwater management standards. Um, Do you, what, uh, what have you done to, because um, this is the water resource, what have you done for, for, uh, for the water quality? Have, have you got uh, oil separators and Grid chambers and stuff in there. Um, so we're treating it with uh, deep sump catch basins and sediment four bays in order to get the um, the TSS removal that's required. Um, they sort of you know, go through the basins, the catch basins, and into these uh, uh, retention ponds. Mm -hmm. Deep sump catch basins, sediment four bay. And set it before we coupled with the infiltration basin. What's the drain system going to be with the, the repair area? The road? So there's going to be floor drains in here to an industrial wastewater holding tank, typical tight tank, tight tank. with the secondary containment and alarms and all that stuff. Um, And we are, as you mentioned, in the water water site protection district. Uh, so we are also seeking a special permit at the same time as a site plan review for the use in that zone. Um, so construction of a contractor's bay garage triggers a site plan, a special permit in the industrial district. So that's a special permit for the use in the industrial zone and a special permit in the water resource protection districts. <coughs> that's pretty much the uh, overview of the project. What is the usage of this property here, the, the, the Abana? Uh, there's a church here, and I believe these are residential. It's residential. Uh -huh. I think the first <coughs> two, 200 feet back are the houses out front. Then it becomes all backs up to the church. And the church is out back. Yeah. Yep. Have you got any kind of uh, s screening or anything along line here between the the two, or, or is there already a vegetation? There's a stone wall. Yeah. Yeah. So we're showing some some trees uh, that can be taken up, or we could put fence. Or okay, because you you you're adjacent to a res residential area. Uh, or res residential usage. I know it's a, it's mm -hmm. a uh, industrial zone, zone, but okay. it's a residential usage. So, um, in fact, I'm surprised we don't we don't have people in here. Usually, they. Yeah. I think it's all owned by Spadius. Is the Spadia owns those too? I think Spadia owns most of those houses up to the church. <laughs> the house that in the corner going into the church driveway is. Is owned by the church. The assistant pastor lives there. Okay. Right. Says Rosa and Metis. Yeah, Rosa, Rosa Metis. Do you have, is, is there a security fence or anything along through there, or just? 
Or are you just leaving the stone wall? Uh, we're just going to leave the stone wall. That's right. It is right on top of the property line. Yeah. I mean, there's some existing fencing on the, along here as well. How about lighting? Lighting, we're showing lighting on the building and in the parking lot. Uh, we can get four metrics if you like. But there will be the dark sky compliant and everything. That's, that's but it, everything is, it has, has the, uh, the shades and everything so that it, so we're yeah. not lighting up yeah. over it. That the, um, as we were talking earlier about the LED lights, I don't think they really even need the metal shields anymore because they can, they can really direct those a lot better. Okay. So, we have our details. So. Okay, and the water resource, um, prohibited uses, landfills, open dumps, you're not doing that, class 3 auto graveyard, you're not doing that, landfills, you're not doing that. Facilities that generate, use, treat, store, or dispose of hazardous waste that are subject to. Uh, oh, what kind of a contract was he? Excavation. Earthwork. He does a lot of uh, coal farms. I think he did the one um, in Brockton that was just done. Okay. Yeah, Wall Street. Okay, uh, petroleum product, including gasoline, diesel, yeah, <coughs> it is how, how is he planning on having a, a fueling there or, or, or a tank or anything? Um, does the tank allow? I don't think it is. No. So he's not going to be able to do that. Okay. Um, we did have a discussion with the water, I said he met with the water farm out there. We, I think they talked about that as well. And they may allow okay. all those cross I just got it when I got here, so I'm not quite sure where it is at the moment. I believe they said that um, the delivery, like the truck to come in and do work for them can, might be okay, but not permanent. Okay. Yeah. I, does he have uh, tanks on his trucks that he, that he uses to go to sites? Why does uh, he have somebody come around when he's working the site? I know he has people come around when, when they're at sites for doing that, but I'm not positive. Uh, so he might have a 100 gallon bed tank or something. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm wondering. Fueling. Yeah. Okay, uh, that, this invoice for Greg. Yeah, and there was the other one we didn't give them. We give, give them both. Give them both to Greg. Right. Greg's got plenty of money. Okay, so all, 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 these, this all this overtime work he's right. got and here. And then the other one should be on the top somewhere on that one. Sorry, so. Yeah. Is that Brandy? I'm sorry? Is that for the previous one? Yes. Yeah. yeah. They got plenty of money. Well, they'll have plenty of money. I'll pull them right along. Thank you. Okay. Thank Unless you. it goes up in smoke. <laughs> Okay, we got some correspondence from the water. The commissioners are all set with the water line issues, which was probably the, the, the line to the barn they have met. 
then I have come up with a plan to fix it. Okay. Then, uh, Okay, he's talking about the the issues with the uh, barn and stuff, but then it's a paragraph here in which I, is pertinent. We are notifying the planning board as the property owners are applying for a special permit for this property, which is located in the Water Resource Protection District, and should be denied until they are in compliance with the Water Department rules and regulation. It should also be noted that the period for road opening permits being allowed for this season will be coming to an end of this year soon. Okay, so, uh, which I think Greg already alluded to that they, they were in the process of changing it. So we'll, we'll, we can just make it a, a condition that uh, um, what is that they are in compliance with the, the with, with, the, with the water department, which it probably, they probably will be by the time we get we get our, our end of it done. Also, I have, we have a letter from the conservation dated October the 9th. Um, yeah, it needs to be in the of the filing of general stormwater. Now, you, have, did you say you've already been to the CONCOM? No, I have. Not yet, okay. But, but, yeah, but you were talking about you Previously, before this project was even um, considered. Oh, okay. For all right, all right, okay. Found many and so all right. The yeah, is, is showing she a 20 minute wide gravel access road to the construction of the proposed. Yeah, that, that was mislabeled. That, that shouldn't say um, access road to, it's something like access road to construction yard, but the construction yard is going to be over here. Yeah, and the access road is that one right this, there. This is for oh, to, yeah. to get back here okay. to this work. I, I saw that and I wasn't sure yeah. what you meant. Yeah, that's, by it that's either. actually kind of probably from a previously okay. overall plan of the site that was kind of got left on. So. Have you have you got a copy of this? Yeah. You do. Okay. We're going to have okay. to the stormwater permit and what that Okay, okay, it goes in. Okay, so you're aware of it and it's. Come part of the record. Okay, as we're going on, uh, storage of liquid hazards. Does um, does he have anything in in, in bulk? Did he any, any liquids? Uh, I know um, we had somebody that was did did farms and they and they got in fifty five gallon concrete farms. They got in fifty five gallon drum. Or is everything if it's in the like you get a case of something and, and it comes in a package, package. manufacturer's package, it's okay. okay. It's when you take a bulk and you open it and you pump it from one container to another or you mix them. Okay. Is, it any, is it any such It'll thing? It'll have to be a condition of the approval. I'm not sure if that how okay. it works. Is, it, okay. it, works. is it going to have a, a maintenance area here for us? Yeah, but in the warehouse. In the warehouse, which will have uh, floor drains, everything will go in with the tight tank. Yep. Yeah, so they'll need some sort of oil water separator. Well, and, and the liquids all have to be properly stored in a, uh, a container that's equal to 110% of the volume. Even a brand new 55 gallon drum should be in a fiberglass, let's say, container that's larger than the drum. Even virgin product has to be stored properly. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll make that. But the um, the tight tank and, and, and was it? Kind of like a secondary containment for any. Okay. Well, we were, 
Oh. Yeah, you know, we fed so many tonight. I want to make sure. So this this will take care. And it's all alarmed, and yep. and, and it will be uh, uh, emptied in paperwork. Will don't we require an inspection of the tight tank system and I believe on an annual basis? I believe so. Yeah, and the inspection has to be sent to the building inspector. Right. Yeah. In fact, the, the, the wording for that is in is in the enterprise and the uh, Noonan one, which which Greg is also familiar with. Yeah. So we'll okay. get we'll get out. The, the wording from the new one will be, will be uh, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, these are not allowed. Storage of sludge and septage. You're not going to do storage of de-icing chemicals. This says storage including is within a structure designed to prevent the generation, escape, or containment. Which is what uh, Tony was talking about. Okay, yeah. animal. I wonder. Have is he selling off the the other parcel, or is he this this man not buying that? Um, the, the, the the barn. Yeah, no, he's not buying the barn. He's not buying the barn. So it is. Are the spadies keeping that, or is that being sold to somebody else? Uh. See, there was a lot of back and forth on that. I know Eddie was working on it, so yeah. I'm not sure if he purchased that or if that's was cut out and Spadey is keeping. Um, I can look into that and find out what the final idea was because it was back and forth. And I think he was talking to Eddie about that. Well. It, it was, yeah. yeah. And uh, but where you, where your your activity is is all down in here. To doesn't extend any further than that line, does it? Nope. Okay, so it, for the sake of argument, all work is contained on, that MJM is doing is, is contained on this, on this, this lot. This lot one? Yes. Yes, okay. A discharge to the ground of non-sanitary wastewater, including industrial and commercial process wastewater. Um, there's nothing such as such as that. Is there anything in the water protection as far as stockpiling of materials, as long as it's clean? So if he's a contractor, he's have to have a few piles of. I think I think that actually comes in on the contractors. Okay. So we got through all of those. Let's do that. Um, changing the curb cut into this from next to the barn to up near the stone wall. Yeah, we're sure we're cutting that off. So that's kind of where the, that's where the base is, so that road right there. We're sure we're cutting that off over here. And now that will come up.
we were also in a dealing with a uh, this is section four point four table of regulations and the commercial and industrial uses number two contractors office and storage yard screen from abutting lots or exterior streets by a solid lamp tape screen and a fence at least five feet but not more than seven feet in height. So going back there we you are going to need some screening. Yeah we're proposing screening Right along here. Right along that yard, that area will be designated for the construction yard. Oh, okay, so, so so that's where you'll be doing, okay. Yep. Call that as a six foot tall fence. Okay, so there won't be any equipment or so anything that's outside. That's between five and seven. <laughs> I think I'd have to put a six. Okay. That's which needs a, sp a special permit, which we can bring. So we got two special permits. We got a special permit for the contractors, we got a special permit for the water resource, and we got a site plan review. I think you got it right there, but this is the rendering of the buildings. Basic premium fresh building, probably uh, roll call would do that. Further qu questions, concerns, interest? Okay. Just turned over. I got it highlighted. They keep changing them. I gotta, I gotta relearn the whole process again. I know how it is teaching an old dog. Yeah. Don't worry, you're catching up to me. Quicker than you think. Okay, we have to make, this is under the Water Resource <coughs> District in Section 4.6.9.3. We have A, B, C, and D findings we have to make. Is, is consistent with the purposes and intent of Section 4.6. Is appropriate to hydrology, natural topography, soils, and other characteristics for the site to be developed. Will not during construction or thereafter have an Adverse environmental effect to the water resource district and uh, will not adversely affect an existing or designated future well. Okay. I'll entertain a motion if you so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. The vote is you unanimous to the fourth present. Okay, then for considerations for a special permit in, in all districts, or, or all of them. So this will be, cover, actually we already did that, it cover it. But this will be for the contractors, you have the site is appropriate location for such a use, structure or condition. 
The use as developed and operated will not adversely affect the neighborhood. There will be no nuisance or hazardous vehicles or pedestrian or volume greater than the capacity. D, adequate and appropriate facility to provide for the proper operation of the proposed use. Access to the site over streets is appropriate for the type of vehicles involved. Tony? Second. All those? Aye. Aye. Vote is unanimous of the four present. And now we have to approve the site plan. Uh, site plan uh, review process. Uh, Motion to accept is presented. Tony? Second. All those in favor? Yep. Aye. Okay. Um, any conditions? No, because I think the conditions have been listed. Yeah, I think we pretty much did mm -hmm. anything. He's I, I think we discussed got the tight tank. He's already yeah. discussed He's addressed the, the parking lot, drainage, separators, and all that type of general. Okay. So with that in mind, we will prepare the special permit, file it with the town clerk, and, okay. and you'll be off and running. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. The time being 7, uh, 10 7.03. 7.03 and count.